This video is lecture 5 and this video is about the equivalent circuit of an induction motor. Let's look into the induction motor and how we can derive the equivalent circuit. In this case we can derive the equation of the equivalent circuit for one phase with the, with the understanding that the voltage and current in the remaining phases can be found simply by an approximate phase shift of those of the phase under study. So the equivalent circuit per, by considering the resistance, reactance and other parameters per phase is, is found out. So if you see the induction motor works very much according to the transformer principle and the voltage induced in the primary to the secondary has a specific ratio and that ratio is called the transformation ratio A and the current in the prim primary and the secondary will also follow the same transformation ratio. Again, the rotor is a secondary here, can be considered as a secondary winding of a transformer and the stator as a primary winding of a transformer. So if you consider or if you go by that same principle, then you can derive the equivalent circuit for the primary of an or the stator winding of an induction motor as V1 is a supply voltage for any one phase you consider and R1 and X1 are the resistance and the reactance per phase and there is a magnetizing part of the circuit which is which will carry IC current for the core losses and IM for the magnetizing component with XM is equal to the magnetizing loss or the magnetizing reactance of the circuit and I2 will be the current which will be available or the current flowing to the rotor in the rotor and E2 will be the voltage which will be induced in the rotor circuit. Again the rotor circuit of an induction motor can be written as E2S that is a power which is induced or available in the induction motor rotor at the running state and SX2 will be the reactance of the circuit and R2 will be the rotor resistance and I2S yes, will be the current flowing under the running state which is equal to the I2 which we seen earlier and the voltage which will be available at the rotor terminals or the induced in the rotor will be S times the voltage output of the stator or the equivalent voltage available at the stator that is because the slip will reduce the voltage by some amount and the impedance of the induction motor can be written as Z2 is equal to E2 by I2 that is equal to the voltage EMF induced in the rotor and the current flowing in the rotor which can be summarized as R2 plus JSX2 writing in the complex form R2 is a referred rotor reactance and SX2 is a referred rotor leakage reactance at the slip frequency. So to make the equivalent circuit and the computation simple, so what we will do is that we will consider all the values which are written, which are available at the rotor which has been transferred to the status side so that it can be written in a single circuit form. So Z2 is a impedance and it can be written as E2 by I2 that is a rotor EMF induced and the rotor current which can be again summarized as R2S plus JX2. So that was the impedance of the rotor circuit. So what will be available at the other side of the stator circuit is a rotor circuit or the rotor resistance and reactance which is also known as the impedance and this has been transferred to the status side and when the transferred values are x2 and r2 and it can be written in the form of a single circuit now with the current i2 which is flowing through the rotor circuit and x2 is a rotor reactance and r2 is a rotor resistance which is now seen to be varying with a slip so as the slip will be high the rotor resistance will be lower and again the rotor resistance will vary with the slip so that's how you can write the equivalent or derive the equivalent circuit of an induction motor again it is possible to draw a approximate circuit where we have combined the reactance of stator and rotor the rotor reactance refer to the stator side. We do that by multiplying the rotor reactance from the stator in the square of the transformation ratio. When that is done, it is transformed to the primary side as in case of transformer. Same applies in the case of induction machine also. 
and the rotor resistance can be written as 1 minus S minus 1 which is also equal to the power developed by or the equivalent po power developed mechanical power output of the rotor. The electromechanical power per stator phase is equal to the power developed to the resistance R to 1 minus S by S. So R to 1 minus S by S is the total mechanical power which is developed by the rotor. So there is a derivation for getting this power which will be derived in lecture number 7 of this series. If you like this video, please do subscribe, like and comment.